If you've ever written a resume, chances are you toiled over that thing. So it's probably heartbreaking to hear that hiring managers only spend an average of seven, seven seconds looking at your resume during the first review. And I get it because I get tired when I get an email that's more than two sentences. So how can we increase our odds of getting an interview by leveling up our resumes with the help of one Sarah Vermont? <laughs> She's got the answer. Okay, what is your first piece of advice for us, Sarah? Okay, first, do you see how hard this is to read? Like, the font is super small. It's also a weird font. It's something called Garamond. It's a little fancy and, like, curly q -ish. It's skinny. That's why it's this person skinny. used it. So we're working with an actual real, um, we're working with a real actual resume here. We've changed the okay. name and everything. But... I see what this person was doing. Like, I see you, Simone. What's Simone you were trying to do? you were trying to fit a long resume onto two pages. This resume right. is probably actually three pages long, and she was just trying to get sneaky with formatting. So yeah. don't try to get sneaky with the formatting. It actually works against you because it makes the person who's reading your resume feel like like you're just tired when you're looking at it. I want to take a nap. Right, like that's too much. You don't want the person looking at your resume to want to take a nap. You want right. them to be like super excited about what they're reading, and so this is going to work against you. So let me show you what's going to look better. Okay. We're so, just changing the font here. That's literally all we're doing. This one? Yeah. Do you oh, see how that. much better that is? It's cleaner. You, so it, much you, better. Like some of the words are jumping out at me now, whereas so before it felt like better. a jumble. Like you can see the sections better. It's yeah. just easier to read. So this is going to put the person reading your resume in a good mood. Yeah. You want them in a good mood? Yes. It's basically your job to make your resume as easy and as pleasant to read as possible. So yeah. that's why formatting matters. So no okay. sneaky stuff with the formatting. It's better to edit yourself than to try and stick more into the resume, I would say. Um, as someone that gets a ton of pitches from people all the time, 100%. it's like it's basically just delete. Yep. You know, okay, so let's talk about the next thing we need to pay attention to. Okay, so let's comes to take a look at another section here. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. See what's going on here? It's a big chunk of a... This is a big yeah. chunk of text here, right? Yeah. So what this really is, this is a paragraph masquerading as a bullet. Right. Like, <laughs> nice, nice try, Simone, but we've got a paragraph right. in here. There's just too much information. It's not even that the information isn't good. Yeah. It's just that dense text again, it makes your reader not that thrilled to read it. And so even though there's great stuff in here, they're probably going to miss a lot of this stuff because they're, that's not the section that they're going to decide to scan over when they're doing that seven second scan that you were talking about. That's right. Right? So instead... You think you're putting in more. You can go ahead. You think you're putting in more, but what you're doing is you're, you're really actually taking away what you want to, what you want to profile. Yes, exactly. Because now they're not reading any of it. Yeah, when you have too much information, you're actually diluting your your resume and that's yeah. what people don't realize they're usually trying to cram too much stuff in yeah. but do you see how much better this looks way better we have three lines mm -hmm. we can read it mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it's hard work when you're reading it so you always want typically like a maximum of maybe two bullets or mm -hmm. sorry two two lines for each bullet mm -hmm. three's okay if you've got something really big to say so we left this one at three yeah but it's just so much better than it was before Way better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say that we need to always be trying to quantify our accomplishments. So what do you mean by that? And has Simone done a good job with this? Simone has done a good job okay. with this. Okay, Simone's doing it. Okay, so Simone, for example, let's, I'll circle some of what she's done right. Okay. 94%. She's got a bunch of stats yeah. in her resume, not even in just this section. You see how almost every bullet she has, she has something that's sort of quantified. Yeah. Um, even like in terms of a thousand employees she's working with, four mm. vendors, many internal employees. So like mm -hmm. right now, in terms of quantifying, like she's really nailing it in mm -hmm. this resume. And that's what we want to do. Now I will say that's hard to do sometimes to quantify yeah. your achievements. But you can really do that in 
any job. You just have to think about what you do in your job and how you can somehow convert that into numbers. It is a bit tricky. It might be a bit tricky. So if you take my job, for instance, which is doesn't feel very quantifiable, <laughs> what would you be looking at for my job? I would job? probably talk about how many years you've been doing this job. Right. I would talk about how many people are on the team here that you're collaborating with. Yeah. I would talk about um, the number of episodes you've done, certainly. Yeah. That's the key. ratings. Ratings that you yeah. have. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the next step. I want to talk about cover letters, actually. <laughs> like, do you still need a cover letter? letter if you have this going on? You do still need a cover letter. You do. Okay. You do. Um, That's unfortunate. <laughs> no, nobody likes cover letters. They're terrible. What's yeah. supposed to be on them anyway? Okay, so your cover letter, here's the main mistake people make with cover letters. They, they sort of make the cover letter about how excited they are for the job. That's true. Which, you know, that's good to express a little bit of enthusiasm, but really yeah. what your cover letter should be is you saying a little something about what a great fit you are and why your experience is the perfect fit for the job. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that also happening in this part of the resume? <laughs> this part of the resume is super tricky for people. Like uh -huh. everybody has a really hard time figuring out what the heck to do at the top of their resume, yeah. which is why, if I'm being honest, for most people, this section really sucks. Oh, it so, does. Okay. Eh? So we here's why it sucks. You know how we were talking about dense text before? Yeah. It's dense, and you don't want to start your resume with dense and boring, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're trying to talk about, you know, in a concise way why you're a great fit, but it's just not working here because it's too dense. So I'm going to suggest something different. And if you take nothing away from this discussion, I want you to remember this because this is a real game changer. Okay. You see what we've done here? We've added a new section, and literally all we've done is taken what she was saying there and converted it into individual bullets. You see how much okay. easier that is to read now? Yeah, yeah. So much easier. And so when the person is scanning your resume, they're actually going to pay attention to this instead of just sort of like glossing over it. And importantly, mm -hmm. this section is a section where you want bullets that are relevant to the specific job you're applying for. You just don't want bullets that are only about your own personal experience. You want to map that onto the job description. Mm -hmm. So for example, Simone here is applying for a job. She's got tons of great experience to, to use, but this section here, like the job she's applying for doesn't have time constraints and she doesn't have to work with budgets. Right. So this actually isn't a great bullet for her to include. Yeah. So you want to fill that section with mostly things that are relevant to the job that you're actually applying for. And you have to edit this section every time. Constantly. If it's a job you really want, at yeah. least. Very good tips. Thank you for that. Now we can get our resumes up to snap.